Hello, I'm Nikki and welcome back to another Let's Draw. Today we're doing another portrait. Today's portrait was a bit of a challenging one for me because of the hair. I was a little intimidated by um, the, the texture that I'd have to draw, but I did eventually figure out a, a cool method to do it. So when we get to that, you'll see it was pretty good. Um, I ended up making some wonky mistakes with the eyes of this that I didn't see until I got to the painting like near the end of the painting the face where I finally fixed it like I think looking at it at this point you can kind of tell that the left eye is more looking down than the right um, it, it's not as pronounced at this level I, I think I do adjust it at some point but um, I don't it's, it's really it becomes really pronounced when it's finely painted and I do eventually fix it also like I didn't notice how high up I drew the ear in um, my sister was actually in the stream and she pointed it out for me and I, I eventually fixed that so we'll see that when we get to it too I love the colors of this one it was so vibrant and and like yellow you know so the name of this cello actually was because of a, a viewer in my stream he said that the colors reminded him of a cello, an actual C-E-L-L-O, and I was like, really? Um, and I guess in a sense it kind of looks like that, but I just love the name that he came up with, cello, it's spelled like yellow, um, and I, I thought it was really cute, that's why I ended up going with that name. Here we are doing the blocking in phase, and you know, sometimes it's really hard to figure out the colors. Like. I'm looking at this these blocked in colors and I'm, I'm still wondering if I did them right but I mean it turned out right in the end it looked okay I mean there's the same problem that I have where I have, I'm looking at one monitor with my reference and drawing on another monitor so um, it's like the colors will be different but as long as I stay consistent it's not a problem so I mean if I keep the reference on that that screen it shouldn't be a problem it's just like my final image is gonna look different um, but I think I had made the shadow on the forehead, you know, around the forehead there a little too saturated because, um, I never did fix it. I don't think, um, it was a little too saturated for my taste by the end of it. See, I just adjusted the eye again, but it's still going to have to be fixed later on because it's still looking upward a little too much. Um, but here we start, we're already into the render. Um, and you can see like it looks fine But compared to the rest of the face after the face is rendered the forehead looks really saturated and I feel like it looks wrong And I never did fix it. I don't remember why I think I just probably forgot <laughs> I kind of had a little trouble with the nose. Um, I Had it a little twisted like there were a lot of things with this picture like so many things were twisted I I noted that like what there's so many things wrong with my sketch I don't know how I didn't catch them in my sketching phase but that that happens sometimes like you sketch it and it looks fine or maybe i didn't flip the image in, enough maybe it, um i do need to like have like a flipped version of my reference so that i can flip the image while i'm sketching i think that's a good idea i should do that in the future um because i think i just adjusted the nose but i think i'm going to adjust it again where it's it's kind of leaned a little bit too much to the right oh is this me fixing it kind of looks like it <laughs> um and i had to adjust it after i think after i paint the lips i can't remember now um there was another like color on the eyelids that was in the, the reference that i ignored because i i didn't think i was gonna like it so i just stuck with the gold on the eyelids and i'm kind of glad i did that um because sometimes like drawing makeup painting makeup it doesn't always work out for me I don't always like it but I think I, I, sh I could have probably tried it anyways and then if I didn't like it just paint over it but I was I was happy with the gold just having the gold so now I'm doing the eyes and I think it's um, when I do the next eye, I'm gonna like see the issues with the turn of the eye like you can see it like really exaggerated at this point look how different the two eyes are I don't actually notice it until I'm done painting and I look at it um, on a whole um, it looks so weird especially flipped look at that it's so strange like when it's on this 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 side it doesn't look as bad but when it's flipped it looks really extreme 
Yeah, I just noticed it. Now I'm going to Photoshop to fix it. There we go. Much better. <laughs> All right, now we're painting up the neck and the rest of the body. I, I have to say, I really like how the neck came out. Well, at least the left side of the neck. The right side gave me a little trouble, but um, for the most part, I was, I was, I was happy with it. Um, but I like, I like the the tendons, how they look with the light cast on them. It looked really good. And I was happy with that, how the hand came out as well. Um, you know, thinking about it, I feel like this piece was really a good journey into practice for painting darker skin tones because, um, like for example, getting the really bright highlights against the dark skin is not something that I do often. I don't paint dark skin very often. and. I really need practice with it. Like, I, I don't think I do dark skin from imagination very well because I'm always afraid that my highlights are gonna look too weird with the, the darkness of the skin, I, or I never really quite figure it out quite right, you know, or I'm not really happy with it. So this piece was, was great practice, like getting really, really dark and really, really bright. It's a lot to learn. So I, I was very happy to, to get that with this piece. But besides that, there were so many things that I had to, to figure out. It was a little overwhelming. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I feel like the, the hand at this point is looking good. And I think we're almost ready to do the hair. We have the lips left, I think, on the face. Um, the lips were very simple in my piece. Um, like, I think in the reference, the, there were like lines on the lips. Let me check out the reference real quick. Yeah, there are a lot of There's a lot of detail on the lips of the original reference. In fact, the original reference was very high quality um, I was able to see a lot of detail things that I don't I wasn't normally able to see in previous references um, but I I got really scared and I didn't actually paint a lot of detail on the lips Oh, and I, I think at this point I realized I forgot the ear um I, I tend to do that. There was actually this piece, this piece I did a long time ago, um, of a fairy dancing with the hand of another like elf, elf girl, and I completely forgot to paint her ear, her giant ear that's quite visible, and I think the unpainted ear version is still up on my Instagram. <laughs> it was so funny, and I didn't even notice for a while like it's after I went back to the image um, no one showed it to me it's like I, I found out myself and I was like oh my gosh I totally forgot to paint this ear so ever since then I've been like kind of paranoid about ears and not and not forgetting to paint them like sometimes I still forget but I remember eventually at some point now I'm doing the eyebrows I did forget to do the eyebrows too um, I struggled with the eyebrows because if you look at the reference you can see um, very clear uh, strands of hair in her eyebrows and whenever I, I did that on mine I didn't like how it looked and I wonder if it if maybe if I had like put them on a separate layer and then did some highlighting to it if that would have made a difference I'm not sure but now we're on to the hair and um, I'm trying out a few things but then I do eventually figure out this method um, where I just literally draw the highlight of every single braid <laughs> You know, this is like what they say you shouldn't do. You shouldn't paint every single strand of hair. But I felt like I had no choice with this piece because what brush has this? Pa well, that's a lie. There probably is a Photoshop brush I could use. But I wasn't about to go scouring the internet to find a Photoshop brush to do this. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna settle in and paint every single, every single patch of light on this hair. <laughs> and it was actually kind of fun. It was a, a soothing process. I, I loved. The, it was really satisfying, like seeing like cutting out the the, the edges to get the, the the bumps of the braids showing. It was really satisfying, and and I just had you can see right there like just three colors: the really really dark uh, undertone, uh, the first layer of highlight, and then a really bright highlight that would just touch on the top like little dots. And it really worked. I was so surprised that just that really made a difference and it was enough detail to make the braids look acceptable. I was really, really happy with it at the end. Um, overall, the hair looks so cute. I love it. <laughs> it. It gave me some faith that, you know, I would eventually figure this out, this hair thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. This is pretty much it. Is 
coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like the final piece. I sure do. If you want to catch me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash I am Nikki. See you there. Bye.